that we work at Duke is we have um, pet owners volunteer their time. They bring their dogs into the center at Duke. We play fun games. We look at how the dogs make choices, and then we can determine how they are thinking. Um, but what we realized was that you know, we're only reaching a very small portion of the world. Population of dogs, and there's very limited questions that we can answer using conventional techniques. So because citizen science has become such a big deal where we're basically deputizing um, just everyday people uh, to participate in science, um, you know, it's become such a viable option for the internet. It just dawned on us, hey, we've got an amazing opportunity here. If we come up with a citizen science company where we can provide people the chance to play some of these Good. So everybody saw the video. And um, you can click on that link that I just opened up today. It opens up in a bigger screen, okay? Can everybody do that? Okay. So I'll click also to open up. Can you guys still listen when I'm clicking on it? I guess, okay. Okay, so I open up the link and I see a nice picture here that basically defines Good, perfect, so everybody can hear me. So back to my picture. <clears throat> Where's my picture? So here we go. So one of the things that are important here is the science sees the, the dog as an animal as clearly as we say, where I have a car and it's just materialized, okay? So it's just a material, I don't care what it is, it push the button and it functions. Unfortunately, the science sees that as the same thing. It sees the dog as an animal. If you do this, you get that. So we, we kind of create a clinical environment 
where the dog emotions are completely disconnected. <clears throat> and we try to recreate a scenario where all the dogs on the same circumstances do the same thing, right? Now, here's the problem. How about we don't have that environment and we have a home environment where the conditions are different and we do the same exercise. Like everybody does this exercise at home, put the treat down and point at it. Obviously dogs will go there and pick up the treat, but it doesn't tell us a lot. In fact, it tells us only if you push the red button, you get the red light, okay? We want to go to a next level and we want to see, instead of seeing the animal as, as a robot and we train him to be a robot, how about we give him a little bit more personality and just give him his own personality, his own being, so we can get more out of our dog. So I created a picture, but before that, I gave everybody a homework yesterday and I want everybody to post your three words that would fit there to that personality. So how does, what are three words that you use that affects your dog's behavior? Can everybody give me three words? Yeah, that's fine. Not yesterday, last time, our last blab. No, not, not commands. Okay, we don't want commands. We want words that describe the dog's behavior, that how the dogs are affected by behavior. So Martina said correctly, emotions, Okay, basic needs. What else? Anybody, anybody wants to add something here? Environment, correct. Can somebody post a question? health good okay so we have health we put that on oops that was a black marker on a black screen and doesn't work so far so good right Emotions, what is that what I wrote? Needs, well, no wonder I cannot read it because it doesn't make any sense. Needs, okay, needs, environment, health, physical needs, correct. Good, so we have a lot of stuff going on here, right? Do you guys cheat on my paper? No, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, so I created that ancient Greek thing, monument, <laughs> because I wanted to kind of see that column. So each column is based on two sides, on the very bottom of the column, you see 
species okay so uh, the basic behavior depends on the species we are we are correct here right the next of the species we have the breed qualities so depending on the breed i have i can expect certain behavior or spectrum personalities of the dog okay i cannot imagine a dog will fly away and i cannot imagine a, a dog to do something a turtle would do or the frog so there's something you can expect so after the breed quality is determined like what dog do i have do i have a shepherd do i have a mastiff do i have a beagle so all these breeds are become space very specific with their behavior and therefore their personality changes okay a mastiff will have a different personality at the base than a beagle a dachshund or a chihuahua does it make sense? So the next thing is based on the breed, if I work on certain things, I may create a better personality. So a dog that does nothing, he's basically be his own breed, similar personalities. So if all the dogs will grow up in a, in a, in a hospital, in a white clean room, most likely they will all show similar personalities i'm not saying the same but similars because we remove the confidence we remove the trust we remove the knowledge we have a minimum nutrition we have a minimum health uh, almost no trauma and no job description so what we get basically is a pure dna dog whatever is in his dna whatever the dog was bred for that most likely will be his basic personality plus minus a little bit. So now I can see that I, if I add, for example, confidence to a dog, I have a confident dog who trusts his decision making and he will most likely do things that he see an effect from it. For example, the pointing. So if I have a fearful dog and we're going back to the example of the video we saw before, if I point to a dog who's fearful, he will not go to the treat. He will back off. Okay. So in order to go to get the treat that he wanted next to me, he most likely needs to have a basic confidence. Otherwise he will not come close to me. So we see already that confidence is a main factor if the dog will do something or not. And then the next level is anybody has an idea what will be the next column? So the next column would be trust. And why is trust so important? Why do I have it on the second level? Because if a dog doesn't trust, he switches into fear. Okay. So if he doesn't trust the situation, what's the meaning of your host? Okay. I don't get that. Um, once once you don't have trust lost okay you don't trust you will not succeed if you don't trust your abilities to act according to your breed meaning is you fail on your job at the base the next thing we need here is knowledge the more knowledge a dog gets how to perform in a different job situation the most likely he will perform better than other dogs the next thing is, let's say we have a dog who is awesome. He has confidence, he has trust, but he's so hungry, he cannot even take his legs off the space. So he's male nour nour nourished, meaning is nutrition is a basic factor for the dog once he has confidence and trust and knowledge to go and hunt because he's hungry. So if he doesn't have knowledge and if he doesn't trust his abilities and he doesn't have his confidence, he will starve right so next we have food but we'll still fail on the health so if a dog has hardworm he will not be able to chase an animal because he will basically fade and drop off and then the most important part after that will be trauma would a dog chase a snake twice would a dog attack a crocodile right so we see that trauma does have an effect on dog's behavior and dog's personality. A, 
a dog who is abused, a dog who is hit and hurt, will not have confidence, he will not have trust, he will not have the knowledge he needs, he most likely will not get nutrition he needs, and basically he suffers with his health issues because trauma creates also cancer. Wink, wink, trauma create cancer, okay? And finally, if everything is perfect, then finally the dog can, <coughs> sorry, a dog can finally do his job right if we are able to give him the right job description. Because I cannot have a dog who is a hunting dog taking care of my chicken. Make sense? And obviously, I don't expect a German Shepherd to go hunt birds because it doesn't work. But if I describe and explain him the job description, he most likely will perform more or less to the job I, I show him. And here's the question. Why do dogs need a personality in our relationship? How do we benefit from that personality. Correct. That's nice. Correct. Just give me some examples. And here's a tricky question. Let's remove the dog the word dog from the equation and let's add the word partner okay do we have similar stuff going on here right if we have that columns more or less it's basically the same thing we ask from our partner. If we don't have confidence to our partner, we will not start dating. If we don't trust him, we will not go into a deep relationship. If we feel that the partner doesn't have any knowledge, then most likely he will not feel comfortable sending him somewhere to buy stuff that you most likely think he will fail because he will not recognize the package. Well, finally, if he eats too much or he's bulimic, then most likely you will have an issue too because it's unhealthy. If he's sick, that will be a trigger because it's different to have a super healthy, most of you are girls, super healthy husband and he's not sick. You are like, oh, whatever, you know, I love you, but, you know, maybe we'll more not date. Or what happens if your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend has a deep trauma that doesn't help you having a relationship, okay? And finally, he doesn't have a job. So you say, well, you know, we cannot survive. I work one job and you don't work yours. So now we have a problem. Who pays the rent? So we see here that we can expect similar things that we expect from a, from a human. We expect from a dog. And why is that? Right? Sophie got something going on here. Because our basic relationship, our basic relationship is based on a friendship. And as we call it, our dogs are best friends, right? Why do we call them best friends? Because they have that personality that matches us. Correct? Is that the case? Well, they can express love, but not the way we perceive love. So they have this unconditional love that some of you have worked with already. So we cannot expect the dog to love us the way we would love our partner. But we expect from a dog something that we do not expect even from humans. Like if I leave my house and come back after 14 days, I will not expect my partner to be at home. 
but I definitely expect my dog to be there because there was nobody there to let him out, right? That's a good question, Martina. You can put that question out because let's let's watch that a little bit. Ask your question official. Official question would be backslash Q. And then you post your question. Good. Any other questions so far? Good. So does this work for shelter dogs? Here's the question. The dogs create a personality the moment they go into an emotional relationship, okay? An emotional relationship could have different pictures. For example, a dog who doesn't have, who doesn't have an emotional contact with anybody in the shelter. Yep, you can call in, of course. Then at some point, let me accept Martina. Good, here we go. Hey there. Hi hey there. Oh, you scared me. <laughs> so. So I don't know about, this sounds great with dogs that you have at home and that you're familiar with and comfortable with, but you, we get downright, I mean, we call it mean dogs, but like, we get all kinds of personality type dogs in the shelter. And I'm not sure how much this applies to shelter dogs. Okay, here's the reason why it doesn't apply to shelter dogs. Because first of all, you will see a fake personality. And why is that? Because the environment is confusing. You put, you put a scientist in a prison for 14 days, you will not get a scientist out because the stress environment and the condition he's living in doesn't make any sense to his logic. So you will have an irrational dog. You have a dog who most likely goes back to his feral traits. And the same thing happens with a scientist. You put a scientist in a prison, okay? And all of a sudden, you don't have a scientist. You have an angry person who wants to get out of the scientist and he will break his teeth to get out it doesn't make any scientific sense because sci scientifically he should be quiet so he can reduce his time being in there. But instead he gets frustrated and he explodes because all of a sudden his human character comes out. So character and personality are not the same. You can build personality by working on your character. Okay. But you cannot change your character at all, because character comes from a brief, from Greek word, character, and it's haraxi, which is a, a, in grave. Something is in you that has a mark that doesn't change. But you can balance it out like a horse handler who has a white horse and a black horse. That's his own character. The, the way these two horses are working with each other is the character, but he can control this character and become a better person, person because he's able to control his, his character. So if his character is angry and he's controlling his anger, you will never see him angry. Make sense? Yeah, I wonder to what degree we project our stuff Well, at the shelter, you cannot project anything because a shelter dog is a shelter dog in a confined space. Well, okay. still, and some dogs appear. 
very different to different volunteers. Every, I mean, well, for now, we don't have a volunteer yet. Because if you want to get a personality out of a dog, we have to match the character of the volunteer who interacts with the dog. But let's put just a dog in a shelter and we don't have any communication with anybody else. Just put a dog in there. You have dog who more or less will show same reaction based as confusion. Why am I here? Are, some do better and some do less good. So we have dogs Correct. come in, for example, that, I mean, they've never had a bed, they've never had water or food, they've never had even a place inside. And so they are very appreciative. And mm -hmm. it's a certain number of dogs where we know, oh my God, they have it better here, which is kind of insane, right? In a shelter mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And of course we have dogs that feel like, I'm in prison, I'm in prison. And so, so I think it's not as one cut, it's not as one one fits all. It's more like they already come in with different personalities and environments and the shelter may stress them, but sometimes it also relieves them because they were so stressed in their home that they're better off. The shelter is a, that's a good point. But we need to see here that most of the people and that blab is not for the trainers, okay? That's a bluff for everybody. A, um, a shelter is a very special environment that is compared to a prison. Yeah. It, it just identifies or it intensifies your personality and your character, okay? It doesn't change it, it just identifies it, makes it bigger. So if you are angry, it makes you even worse. If you're a calm dog, you most likely will shut down. Yep. Okay. So let's put the shelter aside a little bit and see the dog that we meet outside and the dog we want to adopt, the dog we have in our house, because that's what we're struggling with. And since I got a dog from a shelter, I decompressed him and he's literally three days in the house or a week or two. Now, how do we want to get the perfect dog out of it? And that's what we're focusing here right now. Factors that affect the dog's personality. So I can have my perfect dog. So you apply those pillars. Exactly. And I have to start with the, from right to left, not from left to right, right? Whatever the picture says, right? From right to left, because that's how the first impression comes through. Makes sense, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Sorry again. I need. I think to grab some water. So, Martina, if you see that um, picture, I want you to repeat again what you're seeing here while I'm getting some water going on. Does anybody want to just jump on here on the blab? So I see job description, trauma, health, nutrition, mm -hmm. knowledge, trust, and confidence. So you basically start out with a job description because the dog needs to kind of kind of know what to do. Otherwise, he'll just take his own job. And taking his own job is probably not a great thing. So you first mm -hmm. find a job description and then you need to look at trauma because trauma is a huge deal when especially if you adopt from a shelter, which some dogs are. Mm -hmm. um, all my dogs basically had trauma. So, um, and then you work yourself through health and nutrition, which comes, of course. So what, what is meant by knowledge? Knowledge is what you educate your dog with. Say it again. What is the information and knowledge you give to your dog? Okay, so a dog who never been in the house, like crate training, obedience, leash training, that's knowledge. So teach your dog different tasks so he can survive in a, in a in a home environment. Okay, and then trust. We know what it is. I mean, the dog has to trust you. And then let me see what the last one was. Uh, confidence. So you think mm -hmm. that's really the last one to to teach? Well. I basically read from left to right. 
Oh, you start from left to right. Right, because the first thing you see, you don't see the dog's job description. The first thing you see is confidence. And the first confidence you see from his tail. Is it up or is it under his legs? Yeah, you see okay. that. The second thing, the next thing you, you next thing you see is, does the dog trust me? Does he has the head high or does he has the head low? Good. The next thing is knowledge. Does he know what I'm talking about? Does he speak dog? Can he communicate with me? Is he talking? Does he send me messages and signals? Okay. The next right. thing I'll see is he hungry? He's gonna eat me, or is he satisfied and is good nutrition wise? And then the next thing I will see is, is he healthy, yes or no? And then I can identify trauma. And at the yeah, very unless, end- Unless you get that first, you know, if the dog lunges at you, then you're conflicted with that right away. Okay, okay. so, um, wait, okay. How about, uh, I can't see that. In, Jess, hop on, come on, girl. What was the question? I have a dog in our prison program that I wish you could work with. What she needs is beyond my scope. Well, it's not in your scope, but it's in your blab, right? Get Come on, on the blab. Jess, hop on. Okay, okay, good. Well, um, <laughs> message me, send me a video. Message me, send me a video, um, and we can talk about it because we can give you some exercise to identify what's going on with your dog. And Martina may help you too here. Yes, so, I will help you. Um, yes, I want, I want you to post that problem on our group, okay, on our holistic dog training tribe. So and we Jess, take it from there. Sometimes behavior modification isn't working because the dog has a problem. So I don't want to modify the bad behavior. I want to fix the problem, if that makes sense. So I'm not, I'm not that much into behavior modification. I'm more into what's the dog's problem and how can I fix it? So of course, in a prison environment, you're kind of stuck because maybe it's exercise, I don't know. But let, she's only been there for weeks. So her personality is only now coming out. Okay, okay. so we have a question here. Let's, let's put the question on. See it? Okay, could a dog Lunging be about fear or lack of confidence rather than trauma. Uh, Could yeah. a dog lunging be about fear or lack of confidence? Well, first of all, for the dog to lunge, he needs a part of confidence. So it's it's a multifaceted situation. So a dog can lunge because of his trauma, but if he's not confident, he will not jump on you, right? If he's not confident, he most likely will run unless he's cornered and he will attack you to survive. So you see these things are blending with each other. Martina, uh, don't, we don't spread the messages. Let's go through the Facebook group so everybody's on the same page. Okay, with Jess's dog and the chat. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Good. So how do I bring my questions in here? Oh. Does, can anybody tell me how I can bring my questions up to the other side? Just it's not working that. anymore. Hmm. Okay, I delete this part here. Well, it's I'm gone. not co-host, so I don't, I can't do it. Well, are you co-host? You should be nope. co-host here, no? Nope. Of course. But is of the, course there is somebody. Oh, now of I have. Of course you're okay. cold, see? But I cannot okay. put it over there. I don't know why. Let me try. Questions are broken. Okay, good. That's fine. I'll take it. Thank you so much. Okay, so the questions doesn't work. So we have still the same question. Um, <laughs> does anybody else another question about the pillars? Not the caterpillars, I mean the other pillars. So sometimes there's a change in personality in a dog. And okay. like, for example, I've noticed 
like sometimes when a family member joins, like somebody gets married or you have a new boyfriend or something like that, that your dog's personalities change because another person is entering the arena. And so I wonder sometimes how much I am projecting my dog's well, what, personality uh, on him. One, and one, so when one, there's, sorry. one pillar that I didn't miss, miss here putting on, and I will fix that, is the pillar of environment. But basically, it's not a pillar, it's a base. OK? Um, that's why I didn't put it as a pillar. But I think I'm I'm not sure if it's a, if I should post it as a pillar because I don't feel it is one, but it's the base. A dog, if we say the environment, in a confined space will react different in the North Polar or in Africa. It's probably and, the background color to the pillars. Like it's I the think, background to the pillars. I think yeah, I think you're right. I should put it as a background color. I like the idea. Good. It's a surrounding because that's the environment of every nutrition. A health environment, trauma environment, knowledge environment, trust environment, everything is behind. I like the idea. I will do that. Yeah. And so if you start changing the behind background, then all of your pillars may start to change. Yeah. Like if you bring change in colors. another person into the relationship, the trust level with the original person changes. That's the training, culture. most people most people use different training commands, so there's a change. Some person may feed all the sausage in the world now while the other is vegan. And, you know, even the trauma can be perceived separately or differently depending on the person's background. Like if mm -hmm. the person had similar trauma, they treat the dog, oh my God, you poor little thing. Whereas if it's not a confident dog, it may work better if you say, let's go, buddy, we're going, it's okay. So, <laughs> so I think so that environment... Yes. Um, finish, finish your sentence. Yeah, so I think that the background environment is probably the most important thing that affects all of these pillars, because if we change that, then everything changes for the dog. And that's why they're so freaked out when their environment changes. Correct. So let's put ourselves also in the environment. Uh, before we do that, I want everybody to share it on his Facebook page. I want. It sounds bad. I was thinking it was a good idea to tell your friends about it because I think even as a trainer and even as an owner, if you don't understand these basic pillars, you're not helping your dog. You cannot help yourself because you're losing all these points. And I see people who have knowledge and try to teach the dog, but they don't give them proper nutrition. They give them not proper nutrition and they don't catch up with these health issues. They don't understand the dog has a trauma. And basically the only thing they fight about is the dog's confidence. Oh, my dog is the alpha and I have to be, I have to un-alpha him because I am the alpha. And then I want the dog to trust me, whatever I say. And then I do only certain commands because that's what I want him to know and that's it. And all of a sudden we see if we don't understand the value of these pillars, basically restrain the dog and we don't get his personality out. So there's another one, another thing that I see that I can't put words to it and I'm a foreigner, so it's maybe, but it's like I, I meet a lot of dog owners that have a history or a traumatic history or, and they share freely and um, we get to know each other and be friends while we dog train. And so sometimes I see that they're putting their stuff or their issues onto the dog. And so it's kind of like they're almost causing the dog's trauma, but it's not. I, I, I'm not sure how to, how to call that. First of all, is the emotional influence we have on our dog. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So emotional influence, it's part of the environment because if I create an emotional pressure, in your case, a projected trauma, okay, that's the environment the dog is in. It's the emotional environment. So see the environment of a dog like, like an onion layer, the home environment, the emotional pressure, the city environment, the weather environment, the other dog's environment, all of a sudden you have this cover environments over the basic environment. 
that you're in a relationship. Makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense. So it's part of the environment, you think? Yeah, yeah. I think, that, I mean, it's the environment, but in a, in a, in a different dimension. Okay? Yeah, it's, if it's, you talk huge. it's huge, because that's sometimes the thing you need to change to make the dog situation better. Unfortunately, scientifically speaking, it's not acceptable yet. <laughs> there, are scientific, there are scientific... What 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 are you guys laughing about? <laughs> well, so it's, it's scientific proven that dogs do have emotions, but everybody's touching that with gloves. Like, well, what? really? Yeah. Wow. What, what are we talking about? That that dogs have emotions. I thought that was. I mean, I I've seen I've seen animals die in my home, and I've definitely seen the display of emotions in my dogs that weren't mimicked by me. Well, the, the problem here is, is a lobby problem, okay? Imagine that officially we admit that animals have emotions, okay? Then we have a serious problem in the food industry because then we have to admit the cows has emotions and the pig has emotions and the chicken has emotions, right? And all of a sudden it says, wait a minute, if you're putting a cow in a in a den in a confined space and I feed her what I want, she is emotional traumatized. Can you see that effect it has in the business? So it's yeah. not acceptable. We don't accept that. It's just wrong. So the dogs at this point are pioneers because nobody really can touch the dogs because everybody has his own dog. So <laughs> I dare to say without getting killed, okay? that dogs do have emotions and they do feel bad about you being sick. Yes, they do. Or when yes, you're not they present, do. they grab your hand when yeah. you're not present. Right. And if you have depression, he will bark or bite at you because he wants to get off your job or off your desk. And guess what? If you're pregnant, he's pretty frustrated because he tells to tell you, hey, now we are more than one. <laughs> right? Right. And you call the trainer because your dog is misbehaving and you put him an e-collar on because he's misbehaving instead of recognizing is, wait a minute, my hormones changed. My dog picked up on that. Wait a minute. What? Why did my hormones change? Oh my God, I'm pregnant. And I had that case. A client called me and she kind of says, oh, my dog is showing my house off all of a sudden. And I said, well, that's stress. She says, why? My house is fine. We don't have stress. And I asked her, do you expect any visitors? She says, no. Do you expect your mother-in-law soon? No. Well, there's something going on that changed all of a sudden. So what is that? And she's like, I have no clue. And I said, do you expect a baby? And she's like, oh, my God. And I says, what? She says, I think you're right. So the dog picked up on day one that she was pregnant. So Ronnie, um, question when speaking about environment, I'm close to getting another shelter dog. Will this affect Ruby's close to perfect behavior? Of course. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and here, and here's, here's the example, okay? It's a perfect example. Here's what you do. Give me a second. You're going to laugh with this one. <laughs> yep. Good. So we have a coffee mug with a perfect black coffee, right? Black How coffee. Everybody agrees to black coffee? How old is it? Uh, that's, my, that's my perfect. That's, that's, a, that's a yester coffee. Okay. So I have a perfect coffee mug. Now I bring a shelter dog. <laughs> okay. A half and half shelter dog. And I put it in my coffee, just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Okay. What happened? Oh God. <laughs> what, what just happened? I just put a little bit half Thanks. and half shelter dog in my perfect black dog. And all of a sudden I got this runny milky stuff on my black coffee. Like, does it make sense? It's it does nice affect analogy. the dog. You have great okay? analogies. 
uh, at door. Now I get my, I bring my cold coffee. But wait, the analogy help us also something else, because with analogy we can predict by putting a small analogy we can make it bigger. Okay, if I have a very dominant shelter dog. I hate the word dominant, but I use it because it's a common understanding. So if I have a very confident shelter dog who is not half and half, he's like full, okay? And I have a very not confident, perfect dog. What do you think will happen if we put these two together? A full cream dog, exactly. It'll go bad. <laughs> It'll get sour. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. So what, what I, want to, I want to say with that is that if you have that kind of situation, you have to have everybody on the same denominator. Okay. So let me and let I, me just say one, Roman. Let me say one ahead. thing. In in okay. general, when you bring home a shelter dog, most likely, and I've done a, a lot over 400. So most likely, your your even confident shelter dog in the shelter will not come home confident. So your period of five or six days being by himself is very important. And then you can start let them see each other, and then the personalities and confidence level comes out. So when you walk in the I door, you hardly ever have a full confident dog. I, but it will sort of emerge over ten days. I don't want to go into this behavior analysis and see what should I do and what should I not do. I just want to make sure that I have two dogs with two different denominators. And how do I bring these two denominators together? And does any th anybody knows math? I have to have the smallest common denominator. In that case, my closest smallest denominator is 16. Correct? Am I right here? Hmm. No? Which is the common denominator? Two, Smart. right? The smallest Smart. denominator is two. Eight. No, four. Two. Wait, what? Two. Two, right. <laughs> Smart thinking. Six, why six? I get confused. See, I lack of knowledge. So who helps me out here? What's the smallest common denominator? Four. No. Eight. Dogs. <laughs> eight. Dogs. The smallest common denominator is eight, right? I don't right? know. Eight. So if I have eight, I have to multiply eight by two. So I have two eighteens. And I have to multiply. I suck, whatever. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I suck and I'm public. I, I suck. I'm sorry. I screwed up. However, the common denominator is training. I have to build the pillars so everybody of both dogs are on the same level. And that's the perfect match. If both dogs have same knowledge, if both dogs have nutritional values, if both dogs are healthy and both dogs a minimum trauma and both dogs are confident and both dogs have the same job or a similar job or a job at all, then most likely I will not have an interference. As soon as I have a differential, this is when a trigger comes in. If one dog is healthy and the other one is not, then we have a problem. If one dog is malnourished and the other one is not, then we have a problem. If the one dog is super smart and the other one is super stupid, then you have a problem. If the one dog trusts you and the other one does not, you have a problem. So all of a sudden you see that you cannot just put two dogs together and think they'll figure it out. No. And that's nothing different if you have a business running and you bring a new person in, the, in your business, you have to bring him on same speed or he's so specialized that you have no comparison with him. Sophie gets an award. She figured it out. Good. <coughs> so you think basically that 
when you bring in a shelter dog or any other kind of dog together in a home, if you get them both on the common denominators in terms of a time frame, then it will work out better that they're getting along. Is that kind of the yes. message? Good. In general, yes. So that should help Ronnie when she introduces her dog mm -hmm. to make sure like the basic needs and everything is kind of the same. So mm -hmm. that's why I personally never introduce a shelter dog unless I have him seven to 10 days separate mm -hmm. because it well, takes me that amount of time to feed him I, up. And I have, I'm, I'm, I'm saying again, we're, we're not identifying methods to introduce dogs. We just, we just talk about the philosophical background. Okay, because how we build um, how we build personality is not the the individual method how we do it. We just talk about it so we have a better picture. We can go deeper in, into analysis how we bring knowledge over to the dog, how we do nutrition, how we do health, how we create a job. So if you don't want to match two dogs with each other, you have to work at least point through trauma, because if one dog is territorial, it's because he has a trauma. Because dogs are social and they want to meet. So the more trauma he has, the most likely you will fail in the introduction. A dog who is territorial and he doesn't like everybody else in his environment, he most likely would like attack the other dog who is social and wants to meet. If the other dog was being attacked 15 times by other dogs, he wouldn't even meet at all. So you see the trauma is basically the primary factor if you can meet each other's dogs or not. So if you want to meet dogs, you have to start from the other direction. What kind of job do I want to introduce the other dog with? Does he have a trauma, yes or no? Is he healthy? Is he fed? Does he have a knowledge? Does he trust the handler? Does he communicate? And is he confident? That makes sense. Okay? So in that case, you have to go backwards. But in a human environment, you have to work from the other side. So depending on situation. So you think that you can change a dog's behavior i mean a dog's personality not behavior sorry well you can you, you you can you cannot change the dog's character but you can change the personality ah. with, the, with the way you work that pillars okay that's, so that's... if you have a if you have a, a strong character of a dog who for example let's say he's a leader he's a born confident dog who has a leader character, leading character. Let's say, for example, my guy behind me, okay? He is a very confident dog. He has trauma. He has health issues. He had nutrition problems. He has knowledge problems. He had trust issues, okay? Yeah. The only thing he had good, he was, he had confidence. And he didn't have a job. Now, I don't, I only see the character. So is this dog workable, yes or no? How does these pillars look like? And see the pillars like an indication of how much more or less we have each other. Okay, let's hold on here because we have some questions. Yes. Welcome like everybody that. here on the blab. So Cowboy Holden. Yes, does my dog sleep on his back with his feet up in the air? Okay, so that's, that's a position. It doesn't really show in the character, but it shows that he has confidence in his environment he doesn't feel threatened, otherwise he will be snuck in the corner. <laughs> so we have a question here. What what do you think the difference is between character and behavior? And I'd throw personality in there too, because I'm not all that clear. Okay. I mean, personality, the, 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 difference, the difference between character and behavior, they're two different words, they're two different meanings. Okay, it's like, what's the difference between a car and a bicycle? Like, they're different vehicles, okay? So at this point, the, a, a character is the DNA of a dog that is born and gives him special character. He is a hunting dog. So he has, hunting, he has a hunting characteristics. He behaves like a hunting dog. He will most likely will use his mouth. Let's say we have a German Shepherd. He is a herding character. So what he does, uh, just everybody knows I will not call anybody in without any knowledge about the person. So if you want to join next to me, you have to uh, identify yourself and tell what you want to talk about. 
and I'm talking to mods in whatever. Okay. It's the first day on yeah. your lab. I, I don't think you can never, get on here. We've never met him. Okay. So basically on the lab, only people can come who have kind of a past relationship with us. So character you can ask me a question. So Ronnie says, character is who I am. Behavior is what I do. That's good. Yes, yes, I take that. I take that. That's good, Ronnie. That. That's really excellent. That nails but, it, man. If we want to go back to the dog, if I have a hurting dog, I have a spectral characteristic the dog will behave. For example, a hurting dog will go after the legs if he wants to confine the dog. Okay? He will bark and he verbalizes himself. A mastiff, for example, or English mastiff or a bull mastiff will not bark if he wants to give a warning. Okay, he doesn't warn. Um, a does. husky, a bull mastiff will not warn before he attacks. That he's a quiet, silence, taking care of business guy. <laughs> Good to know. So, so we see that every trait of a dog, every every breed of a dog has this characteristic because that's why we bred the dogs. But then, if you put the dog in a boat, or you put him in a home, or you put him in a, in a working field. This dog will change his personality according to this environment, according to his knowledge, his trust, his nutrition, his health, trauma, and job description. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? That totally so makes sense now. If I have a dog that I work with and I cannot make up his, his breed, then I look for these characteristics and I try to identify all these characteristics and see, does he going after his legs? Is he using his mouth? Is he using his ears? Is he using his nose? Right? So is he a sight hound? Is he a scent hound? Is he a herding breed? Or is he a protection breed? Yeah, that makes sense. So the character has a little bit more to do with the breed. Yeah, the which, is the DNA, which is the and DNA. The DNA. And the personality with the environment and trust and knowledge and nutrition and so on. So that makes sense to me. Anybody else feel that makes sense? So last minute. Exactly. Totally. Last, okay. last questions. Who has any questions here? Does anybody wants to have a homework? Good. Sure. I want the homework. So homework. Identify your dog's character. Yeah. Now gotcha. <laughs> Identify your dog's character. But I have okay. a mixed breed. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You want to find the primary character of your dog. Identify things that he does that you find cute. Okay? And we talk about it. It doesn't matter if you're wrong or right. Just try to find these characteristics. What is he does? What is he doing when he finds a dog the first time? Is he like to do that? Or is he just check it out? Or is he going down, make himself disappear? So all these things, small things, makes the dog characteristic. He always behaves the, sa the same thing if he wants to meet something. Okay, and we try to find out what kind of breed he is. Okay. Don't cheat if you know that your dog is a reachback. So how about if all my dogs come from previous trauma. So how right. about the trauma overshadows the characteristics? Does, is even, that... a German Shepherd, even a German Shepherd with trauma will bite you on your ankle and your joints because that's his trait. Even yeah. with trauma, a pit will go after your neck and your throat. Interesting. Okay. So a Yorkshire Terrier, anybody know? I mean, I have a Yorkshire Terrier that had severe trauma, but... Are you cheating? You, you tell already the breed. A terrier <laughs> will have a certain behavior that will go and will challenge. I gotta challenge you. I gotta challenge you. He backs That's off and go exactly. back in the job. Okay, okay, good. So I did it the other way. I have to look at the behavior first and then see what kind of breed characteristic that would be. Exactly. Good. That's interesting. Great homework, Roman. Good. I have two dogs from the same litter. Well, that doesn't mean that they are the same breed. 
<laughs> unless could be different unless, mommies and daddies <laughs> exactly so for example i had a white dog who was definitely a greek sheep dog and i had a definitely clear obviously perfect border collie and they were from the same litter and they had nothing in common not the size not the color not the behavior completely different okay so only if you're sure that mother and father was the same. In your case, um, Cheryl, the dogs are from the same litter because they have the same ear, the same face, the same color. So most likely we have the same parents. Otherwise the bitch was cheating on him, but we don't know because they have the same age, right? So um, at least you can see the trait, okay? Is he a hunter? Is he going after everything? Is he alert on anything that moves that makes him a hunter? Okay, what hunting breeds do we have? And now we kind of start narrowing down to the point that we kind of identify all these small traits. How does he approach the problem? Is he kind of a guy who will fight with a bear or is he a guy who will back off? A dog who barks from distance and try to keep his butt safe will most likely be a herding breed because he doesn't get involved that the necessary is necessary to do that. No, it could Same. be that there's two different dads so far. <coughs> so they're not, they don't share the same father. The same litter is from the same mother, but it could be from different father. Fathers. I've had it, it is, with cats. In a stray dog who is in a stray environment and is exposed to different dogs, every dog, every male dog will start humping the bitch. So the first thing that was stronger breed, the, the kind of breeds coming in, is how many eggs are how you call it fertilized by a particular breed that's why it's very important to understand that the confident dog a healthy dog nutrition and balanced dog with a good knowledge a good trust and less trauma and a good job description knows exactly how to approach the breed the bitch and the bitch would most likely like him because he's the perfect guy Okay, so that's why the bitch who is knowledgeable will pick up the guy who has the best personality to mate because that ensures the breed. Interesting. All right, so we got our homework cut out. Good. So everybody has his homework. You guys know the Facebook page. The holistic um, dog yep, track. That, and that's a closed page, so you cannot be there. The, either you are um a long time member or you are a client and you can apply for it through romanskinandtraining.com and you can apply to join okay so it was nice talking to you guys i think we were very structured today so we we, we did a good, great job uh, i want to say that we have somebody here Okay, Cheryl does a great work because what she does and you guys don't is she copy and writes out all the blabs that we did done so far. Okay, and that's a lot of work because she starts listening to all the blabs and she keeps notes. So hey, Cheryl, that's if awesome. Somebody, if somebody wants its notes, obviously it's not for free because she spends freaking time on that. Okay and she has two dogs and they need food and they need care so you're welcome to donate towards that so i set a minimum donation of ten dollars to get copies of these blabs the more blabs you want you can give a nice offer and you get more of these blabs because this is basically part of the book the book Yep. Identify yourself. See, here she is. Okay. Call on the call, Cheryl. Come on, call in. Okay, let's finish the recording here. Okay. So this is Roman with Roman Skin and Training. Thank you very much for everybody joining, and we're going to our after party.